Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. I'm in an undisclosed location with my sunglasses because I'm incognito right now. But I just met a wonderful person who I believe has IgG4 related disease. So I'm going to give a little summary of IgG4 related disease because this nice lady will hear this later. There are many um, things um, um, and I'm, I'm caught off guard now. So I'm going to do this uh, very ad lib. People who have autoimmune pancreatitis, it used to be felt to be unknown what it was caused by, and those people found on biopsy to have lymphoplasmocytic infiltrate or stromiform fibrosis, which are the hallmarks of IgG4-related disease. The serum IgG4 may be high, but it may be normal. Now, I mentioned autoimmune pancreatitis for no other reason except it is the first thing that came to my mind. Typically, a patient will present with any organ involvement. Excuse me one second. Okay, uh, any organ involvement. Uh, while in my personal experience, which is nowhere near as vast as some of the world expert like John Stone up at Harvard, but um, I have seen parotid gland involvement, submandibular gland involvement, ocular involvement. I believe the lady I met today has thyroid involvement. She was told um, in a European country, in an Eastern European country, that she has Rydell's disease, which I proceeded to explain to her, probably Rydell's struma, which I believe now to be based on her presentation with enlarged thyroid, multiple cyst nodules, and tremendous adenopathy with no cancer, that she probably had IgG4-related disease. And interestingly enough, she is taking prednisone. I don't know the dose. But visibly to me, she has a Cushingoid habitus, and therefore she's taking at least 10 milligrams or 20 milligrams a day, probably for a few months. And I explained to her that she would probably need to go back, speak to her doctor, have the pathology looked at, and look for the proper things that I mentioned previously, the lymphoplasmocytic infiltrates, as well as stromiform fibrosis. And if so, the treatment of choice would be rituximab. Um... So uh, aortitis, retroperitoneal fibrosis are some other of the common, uh, in addition to the pancreas or autoimmune pancreatitis, submandibular, parotid, other glandular swellings, ocular swelling. I did have a case uh, who turned out not to have it, but was init initially diagnosed at a um, tertiary care institution in Philadelphia with pulmonary involvement, isolated pulmonary involvement of IgG4-related disease. So this is a small summary for an nice lady about a condition that is perpetuated by an increased activity of IgG4, which, um, as you know, we have four IgG haplotypes, and the um, lowest uh, one in volume would be IgG4, but an elevation of this tends to cause this immune response leading to an inflammatory fibrotic reaction and um, this would be under a classification of inflammatory diseases that we would call um, fibro, um, fibrocartilaginous diseases. So when you have your differential diagnosis and you see somebody perhaps with arthritis or a glandular disease. Um, also, uh, one of the involvements I didn't mention would be renal involvement. Uh, renal tubular disease is definitely another one. Um, pituitary gland involvement. So when you have these things and you're not really sure of the cause, uh, rheumatology is certainly not thought about. We are not consulted, but we need to never miss these cases. So hope this finds everybody well. Hope you like my shades. Hope I'm still your favorite Dr. Steve. I took a break from the videos for a while. So anyone out there with anything I mentioned, um, feel free to shout out, ask a question, and have a wonderful day. Greetings from, I can't tell you where I'm at.